Hello everybody, this is Namita Thapar, Executive Director of MQ Pharmaceuticals and today we are going to be talking about COPD, Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease and this is a condition that most are not aware of. It affects 10 to 15 percent of the Indian population. The shocking statistic, less than 10 percent get treated for this. So today we have our expert Dr. Jeenam Shah yeah, and our two lovely ladies. Gauri and Nipa, thank you, thank you so much. What exactly is COPD? And, and most importantly, you know, there are three major lung conditions. You have COPD, you have bronchial asthma, and you have lung fibrosis. But very often, asthma and COPD are confused and used interchangeably. So I guess the question is not only what is COPD, but how is it different than bronchial asthma? So first, let's just talk about what is COPD. Correct. COPD, as you suggested, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. The name itself says that it's a chronic disease and that chronicity comes from inflammation and that inflammation can happen because of multiple factors right from environment to pollution to cigarette smoking to a lot of other chemicals. So when they go inside the lungs, they lead to swelling of the windpipe and at the same time there's a lot of mucus production. So what happens is the windpipe gets narrowed. Now imagine breathing from a narrowed windpipe. Mm. So that leads to breathlessness because the oxygen level goes down in your body. Whenever you are exerting, you feel breathless. So it's, this is COPD. Asthma and COPD are different. Asthma generally starts in childhood and you are allergic to a lot of environmental sub, uh, products. At the same time, there is a lot of hereditary which is involved. Right. So when hereditary and environment comes together, you have something called as asthma. Generally starts in childhood, progresses towards adulthood and may spontaneously go away also. As against to COPD, because there's a lot of time which is involved in creating all those inflammation. So it's a long term process. So say if a person is smoking for 10-15 years, gradually the lung will get damaged, maybe 40-50 years onwards, he'll start getting a condition called a COPD. So that is a primary difference between asthma and COPD. Third condition called as lung fibrosis is a completely different subset. You know, it causes stricture and narrowing of the windpipes and the lung parenchyma in which, you know, there's, it's nothing like asthma or COPD. It's a completely different uh, pathology in itself. And I think we will need two separate episodes to cover Correct. asthma and lung fibrosis. Correct. But today, let's talk about COPD and go in more depth. Correct. So, you already mentioned that some of the leading causes are environment and chemicals and smoking. Can we talk a little bit more in detail about these? Because we are all faced with environment chemical and Correct. not smoking so much, that's a choice. But the other part is, is a byproduct of where we live. Correct. But some get it, some don't get it. So, how are some people more susceptible Correct. to getting it versus others? So we, as we know with asthma, the same thing with COPD also. So you need to have a genetic preponderance. Okay. So what happens is when you're genetically, your lungs are weak or you have a family history of COPD, at that time there is more uh, susceptibility to those environmental products. Now we come to the environmental products, smoking still is the leading cause of this kind of COPD condition. Okay. And by smoking, I just don't mean cigarettes. I mean by any kind of smoking. So whether it is a BD smoking, Nowadays, a lot of people are going into vaping and e-cigarettes and all those kind of cigarettes, which are equally harmful. You know, there have been a lot of discussion, a lot of data which says that you know, one thing is preferable over other. But technically, there are a lot of other differences like the amount of smoke that you take, the depth of what you take in, how many times you take it in a day. You know, all those things matter and even the company to company differences are also significant. I'm so glad you're mentioning this because I think there's a very big myth Correct. that if you're doing vaping or e-cigarettes, it's not as harmful as a normal cigarette. Which is again a myth. Which is a myth. Yes. I'm glad we're talking about it today. What about cigars? Cigars are equally dangerous, if yeah. not more dangerous than the routine cigarettes. So what happens is each cigarette has some 4,000 plus chemicals. Hmm. And when this goes inside the lungs, it leads to all those kind of inflammation in the windpipe leading to narrowing. But cigarette smoking doesn't affect the person who is smoking. It also affects the people who are around. The secondary smoke. The secondhand smoke, which we call it as, which is equally or if not more dangerous than the primary person. So when it goes inside the body, because those are incombustible products, they cause more damage. So when you are entering a room which is smoking full of smoke, you are going to equally get damaged. Absolutely. So it's not just you, it's about people around you also which causes smoking. Absolutely. So cigarette, again, is the most important thing. In India, the second most important cause is wood chula exposure. So if you see 70% of Indians live in rural areas yeah. where you, if you have heard about it, it's something called as wood chilla, where the ladies cook in the chula, which is like a wooden thing where they have a utensil on the top of you. So what happens is all those products which are combusted, they lead to a lot of smoke. 
and invariably that kitchen is something which is narrowed off it doesn't have ventilation and all those smokes say 4 hours 5 hours in a day you are inhaling those smokes so most of the interior females interior maharashtra or interior any kind of uh, rural areas females generally in adulthood they f- do find breathlessness which in india is a big cause because still today a lot of indian women are cooking in wood chulla absolutely that is a very important cause apart from that you have other causes like environment so environment is something because of lot of chemicals we see with urbanization lot of chemicals from the exhaust lot of chemicals from the industries vehicular exhaust all this leads to lot of uh, chemicals like carbon dioxide monoxide particulate matter and lot of other nitrogen substances when again inhaled in a you know good amount and especially in urban areas you do end up getting lot of people who are non smokers but still end up developing a condition called as copd right apart from that there are lot of genetic causes like genetic deficiency of some genetic factors which can also lead to smoke, uh, copd but uh, it's not very common it's very rare okay let's talk about the symptoms correct um so ha- breathlessness correct. is a very important one right um so is that the only way you know that possibly there's something going on and you need to go to a pulmonologist or what are the other symptoms so the first symptoms is breathlessness what happens with copd it's a chronic disease and it develops over a period of time so there's nothing like su- sudden thing and you feel okay i'm breathless oh, correct so what happens is as you, as and when you age say 30 years 40 years and 50 years your breathlessness keeps on increasing and what the person feels that you know i am probably that way only so he doesn't realize he or she doesn't realize that actually that is because of a condition called as copd right, right, right. as against an asthma you have an asthma attack and you feel oh yeah there's some problem so the person limits his or her uh, activity levels like going to the gym or going for a walk they feel that though, probably because of aging i'm feeling breathless but that is why they don't end up you know meeting a doctor now to give you what breathlessness is the context of that imagine you know drinking something with a straw mm. so if you try to drink with a bigger straw it's easier to drink more amount of liquid Now, when I make the straw size smaller and smaller, you find it more and more difficult to take that much amount of liquid. The right. same thing happens inside your lungs. When you're trying to breathe with a narrow orifice, it's difficulty for you to breathe inside. And at the same time, there is a lot of turbulence of air, and which is perceived as wheezing, a sound called as whistling, mm. which happens in your chest, and you call it as chest tightness. Correct. That is the primary symptoms of uh, COPD. That is gradually progressive breathlessness. Apart from that, you have coughing. lot of see lot of times you see people they are just coughing 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 this is nothing but a copd cough mucus production that you know there's lot of inflammation happening in the windpipe leads to mucus production and people keep on coughing out mucus this predominantly happens in smokers also and now knowing that copd is not just a lung condition it can affect any part of the body copd because it's a systemic inflammation it can have more amount of heart problems it can have more amount of kidney brain and all kind of problems and even lung cancer can be caused because of copd predominantly because of smoking right these are the symptoms predominantly of copd no and you brought in a very good point of the coughing because um, you know i have a family friend correct where because of copd she coughs so much that she's constantly in diapers correct because for women especially the urinary incontinence correct. after a certain age combined with the coughing correct can be an absolute lifestyle nightmare correct, correct. um and you know just just being out in diapers all day all oh, night crazy. because that's the level of cough you have yeah. it's a debilitating condition absolutely um so the cough part definitely uh, is is a very big symptom and correct. and i like the way you said that it's so gradual that sometimes it may be tough to recognize it correct absolutely and then you go and you get your lungs tested right the diagnosis is a test where you know at what capacity your lung is functioning can you can we talk about the diagnosis part so diagnosis of copd is predominantly by a test called as spirometry hmm. but unfortunately what happens is till the time you reach a pulmonologist that thing never comes into the picture you are just given some therapy some nebulizers here and there you are given some kind of tablets and that causes more damage causes more damage and they are predominantly steroids most causes of causes lo- more damage in the sense is not arrested at the right time correct it's not arrested at the right time at the same time you are giving something which is more harmful like steroids like lot of uh, our patients also have been receiving like what happens is generally you go to a local doctor end up giving a steroid shot for 4 days 5 days and 10 days you transiently feel better and then you know you again go back to the you same thing you don't state. recommend steroids as a treatment is what you're saying steroids are given only for particular conditions i'm not oh, saying it is I not see. recommended it's only in an exacerbation got it so coming back to the diagnosis it's a simple very simple test which is available in most of the hospitals most of the clinics where you have to blow inside a computer the computer will generate the entire uh, loop which will tell you whether there is obstruction or not the level or the severity of obstruction is also told i mean to us by that particular test So that is a very simple test. If I do that test, it takes twenty minutes for me, and then give me a diagnosis. So based on that, I can start my treatment. Apart from that, 
you might be asked to get an x-ray done or a CT scan done to just figure out is there anything else which is causing this problem. Some bl blood test, basic evaluation which is something which is required. But spirometry is the most important thing and most of the patients don't reach till that level also. That's really unfortunate and that's where the awareness and education could Correct. play a really big role. Correct. Why do we take blood pressure medicines regularly is because I know if I don't take it, my sugar level will go high. But that is not affecting me. A prolonged high levels of sugars, which will affect my brain, my kidney, my you know heart, it will lead to atherosclerosis and it will lead to blockages of the heart. To prevent that heart problems for like 5 years and 10 years later on, I take my medicines regularly so I prevent those problems. It is not that I don't take a diabetes medicine today and I have a problem tomorrow. It's not going to be like that. Correct. Similarly, COPD. If you don't take your medicines regularly, I am probably right now, I am fine. But say over years, say two years and five years, I don't take my medicines regularly. What will happen is it will become so much narrowed that it is irreversible damage then. Mm. If it's an irreversible damage, even the inhalers, what I'm going to be giving, it's not going to work on those patients. So the right treatment, the right uh, you know approach, at the same time, regular approach, that is something which is very, very imperative. I'm really glad we spoke about that. And with that, we'll move on to our two women here. Gauri, why don't we start with your uh, story? What exactly happened? Sure. I was born with asthma when I was a child. And I was brought up <clears throat> in Hong Kong and then moved to India. And when I moved to India, my asthma increased. Mm -hmm. So during that time, I also, while I was living in India, I was working with French expats. And because I was, I was working with them, I, you learn things about other people's culture, right? So I picked up smoking along the way. So I had asthma and I was smoking. So two things coming together was not right. At what age did you start smoking? In my 20s. And how, how often, how many cigarettes oh, a day were you smoking? I was like a social smoker at that okay. time. And then as time went on, it started increasing. And then I, I ended up going to GPs because of my asthma. So it was just asthma, asthma attack. So I was like, okay, asthma attack, take the inhaler and then take a tablet and that was it. But when I was when I was a kid, I had to be I had to take steroids. So it was a lot of juggling between figuring out uh, between asthmatic and then as you get older, it became bronchitis. Then after bronchitis, I find out it's um, OPCD. When I was in Santiago, I wanted to see things. I wanted to go up mountains. I wanted to go trekking. I wanted to see more things, but I couldn't do that because of my asthma again. Mm high altitude and then gymming again you can't there are certain things you can't do and then I had a maid that would come in two three times a week say the house gets dusty I had to clean but then again I can't clean because I'm allergic to dust right so there were a lot of there are a lot of obstacles that you face during your daily routine right as a patient and you just have to deal with them. But I'm pretty sure if she does two things, one is stop the smoking, obviously, and takes regular inhalers. Inhalers, I've, yes. you know, told her that you'll be able to climb your mountains again. <laughs> oh, fantastic. But yeah. do you think that with these two things, the lung capacity, which is at 60% right now, it can you can make sure it doesn't degenerate or can it go up to 80-90%? So it's a very good thing. So asthma is generally a reversible condition where you take a medicine regularly, your lung capacity can become absolutely normal also. But COPD is not something which will become absolutely normal. But what happens is whatever is the reversible component will get partly reversed. So say 10% or 20% do get reversed. Okay. And after that, you just have to continue the medicine so that it doesn't drop again. So it can get higher from the current 60%. Correct. It can get higher because okay. she's asthmatic also. So there's two components together. Understood. So asthma part of it will definitely become better if she's on regular medicines. And then you have to prevent the further fall by taking regular inhalers. So Don't the quality the of life can improve. Absolutely. And like he said, you can climb the mountain. Yeah. So we'll be waiting for you, Gauri, to <laughs> climb the mountain and cheering you provided... Have you stopped smoking? No. <laughs> there you go. That's always so difficult, difficult right? Difficult. Right. That is so she, she's difficult. Come yeah. And it's a, it's, it's a long, painful journey with many setbacks. Yes. Uh, but you know, we were discussing earlier of what are the best ways to quit. And he said, yes, you can have a nicotine patch and some medicines, but it always it's comes to the mind. The mind yeah. um, and the willpower of the patient. And um, even that's a journey because even people with the strongest willpowers will have setbacks and they have to learn to 
uh, forgive themselves, pick themselves up again yeah. and keep climbing. Thank right? you. So I wish you the very best in this journey to conquer Thank the mountain you. and conquer yourself in yes. your willpower. Yes, yes. Thank you, Gauri. Thank you. What about you, Nipa? Okay, so to start with, uh, from childhood, I used to have cough and cold very frequently. And maybe I was uh, allergic rhinitis, which we call. Then over the years, in around 2006, when I became a, a professional hairstylist. Okay. So I started working as a hairstylist in a reputed salon in Mumbai. And that was the time in an AC environment, in a closed environment, I'm working with chemicals. Right. So I'm working with uh, hydrogen peroxide, ammonia. So a lot of color treatments, Absolutely. rebonding happening. So a lot of chemical is being infused. Yes. What mistake I used to make, I used to never wear a mask. Oh. I used to feel very claustrophobic. So I used to not wear a mask when I was working. And I was working. And then one fine day, suddenly, uh, I just got this bronchitis attack. And I became very breathless and all. So I went to a doctor uh, and he just gave me some steroid shots. I was absolutely fine. Back then I was very young, so I could cope up, you know. I was very fast in that. And then... Uh, over the years, again, I was working with chemicals on and on for another 15 years passed by till 2020 when I got another attack okay. of breathlessness okay. where I, it was quite serious. I could not uh, actually climb one floor also oh properly. My God. And I was feeling breathless in my regular day-to-day -day activities. I was feeling breathless, breathless. I could not work properly. I used to feel fatigue. I used to not able to, you know, function properly in my everyday uh, routine. Also, my uh, thinking capacity went down, uh, my decision power was shaken up and I was feeling depressed. Simultaneously, of course, I was going through menopause also. Right. So there were two, three things combined. It all came together. All together. And at the same time, COVID happened. So maybe that also was affecting, I don't know what exactly when triggered it. But I was working with the chemicals that point of time also. Right. So everything combined and then uh, in 2020, it became a little worse. That is when my uh, family doctor suggested you go to Dr. Jeenam Shah. I went to him and he actually, we got the PFT done. He saw the PFT reports, which were not that great. Right. And uh, Sorry, doctor, what does PFT stand for? PFT is the same as spirometry. Okay. It's, it's they're interchangeable. interchangeable. There's minor differences, but layman language, we stick to... Same thing, you breathe into a computer for both. Correct. Yes. But PFT is something which is an advanced test where there are multiple tests. Spirometry is a basic test. Understood. Understood. I could not even live normal life, you know, like dancing is my passion. I just enjoy dancing and all. I could not dance. Okay. I could not enjoy my life the way I was. I was very irritated. And then when I went to him, he explained me the whole thing. Are like, you dancing? I'm dancing. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> I important. can breathe. I can climb floors. Now I can climb at least three yeah. to four floors. That's yes, my Wonderful. Is, is thing building, I do that. And uh, I can lead a normal life. My decision power has become better. My confidence has come back. Otherwise, I had lost my confidence. Right. Even for the food that I'm saying, if you know what triggers it, you should avoid those food. Like for me, if I know... I know that uh, anything with chashni, like you know, like gulab jamun, mm -hmm. or even the chocolates for that matter, any oh, lassi, yeah, because it's sticky, so it goes in my throat and it can cause infection. That is okay. what even doctor explained that yeah. I need to gargle, I need to have some hot water, yeah. so that you know it it clears out the throat. Anything right. oily or anything of that sort is going to trigger my throat. Okay. Like there will be. Um, or, uh, infection in the right, throat, right, which right. will trigger through the mucus, again right. the inflammation in the lungs. So everything follows up. So mm -hmm. even the food like lassi, uh, buttermilk, curd, which is in the fridge, ice creams, these things for myself, I have observed right. that these things do trigger uh, my uh, this thing COPD attack, mm -hmm. you know. And that is why I avoid that, which will help me better, you know, function better. Right, right, right. You know, that brings us to the end of another really very 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 interesting episode of Uncondition Yourself and this is a condition where the biggest issue is awareness and going to the doctor at the right time. The second biggest issue is compliance and making sure you take your medications at the right time and like Gauri and Nipa said why um, do we deprive ourselves of really living our 100% conquering that mountain <laughs> dancing our way through life um, we want to be our best versions. We want to be the best versions of ourselves. And for that reason, let's get educated. Let's go get that spirometry test done at the right time. Let's go understand and learn to pronounce 
pulmonologist like i just did a few minutes Absolutely. back and let's get educated on copd thank you very much takdeer apni ujli dhoondne hai wo nikli takdeer apni ujli illi ne man mein thana hai ban ke 